Sabah's rainforest is documented as some of the most diverse in the world. It is home to 440 resident bird species, 190 migrant species, and 140 mammal species. It is also home to the Bornean orangutans and the Bornean elephants, both endemic to the island of Borneo. However, economic development has greatly affected the protection of Sabah's biodiversity. There is a need to find a middle ground between biodiversity conservation and economic development through an integrated landscape planning, creating a living landscape. The living landscape concept is so simple. It teaches us how to share and most importantly, how to have control on development. Achieving and maintaining a delicate balance between economic development and protecting our forest and its inhabitants. It is about conservation at landscape level, where we affect change via protecting and managing our forest, supporting sustainable certification of oil palm, as well as restoring forests by developing wildlife corridors. These three areas, which we refer to as pillars, all happen within one landscape. Over the next five years, the Sabah Landscapes program will work on three landscapes, Tawau, Tabin, and Lower Sugut. This comprises over 1 million hectares. The program will adopt three pillars, protect, produce, and restore. 54% of Sabah's total landmass is made up of forests, wildlife reserves, state parks, and wildlife sanctuaries. The Sabah government is committed to ensuring 30% totally protected areas, or TPA, in Sabah. We are currently at 26%. Areas are turned into totally protected areas because it is sensitive. It means that even if we disrupt a little thing in that area, other species or the biodiversity there might be disrupted. So this area, the Access is limited and there is a lot of rules if you want to do something in that area because we want to prevent it from being destroyed. Through PROTECT, the program aims to support the government's commitments to forests to ensure that existing forests are not destroyed and degraded. A degraded forest cannot support wildlife. Think of it as like our road. We cannot move in a road that is damaged. We cannot go out, we cannot use it, we cannot go and make our living. So think of it as um, if we do not support this forest, we do not help it to recover, it will take a long time for it to recover. There are 11,000 Bornean orangutans and less than 2,000 Bornean elephants left in the wild. Their forest habitats are threatened by the development of land into infrastructure and agriculture. Additionally, their survival is also threatened by rampant illegal wildlife trade. Wildlife crime is more complex when it's involved cross-border and more than one country. Wildlife crime is getting more sophisticated because of the internet. It is evolving faster than our laws. We have three laws in terms of wildlife protections in Malaysia and we need a long-term and central mechanism such as Wildlife Crime Unit. One of the largest threats to wildlife is agriculture development. Palm oil plantations account for over 70% of agriculture plantations in Sabah. Currently, only 27% of these plantations are RSPO certified. Palm oil is served is not the threat, but the unsustainable practices of producing palm oil is the real threat. Palm oil is an incredibly efficient crop. It can produce more oil than any other vegetable oils on a per hectare basis. To put in a better perspective, one hectare of oil palm plantation can produce 4,500 litres of oil, and that same hectare can only produce 446 litres of oil from soybean. Replacing palm oil with other vegetable oils like soya bean will require 10 times more land to produce the same amount of palm oil. 
Sabah is committed to 100% RSPO certification by 2025. Through PRODUCE, the program aims to achieve this commitment through group certification within a landscape, particularly working with smallholders and middle growers. One person cannot do this job. We need a multi-stakeholder approach to help the farmers to reach RSPO certification. We need the government to implement policies and lead the process. We need the large corporation to support and incentivize the farmers to progress. And we need the NGOs to pilot test group certification model so that it can be replicated in other landscapes. Still, many plantations cut through forests used by wildlife such as the born and elephant. This increases incidences of human-wildlife conflict. Restoring habitats and creating ecological corridors can help reduce this conflict. Ecological corridor is a place where wildlife can move about freely and safely and natural processes such as sediment flow and water can happen naturally. But it's more than a name. It had to be protected and it had to be managed. Ecological corridors have been proven successful in Sabah. An example of this is the corridor in Sabah South Woods Berhad. It connects the Mount Louisa Forest Reserve in the north to Ulukalumpang Forest Reserve to the south. The restoration work there is still ongoing, but it serves as a good education and learning for all of us. This Tawau based plantation established a 1,067 hectares wildlife corridor to facilitate elephant movement throughout the landscape. Between 2004 and 2011, SSB faced crop damage amounting to a total of RM 3.5 million, or averaging half a million annually. Since it adopted elephant conservation efforts in 2012, the damage dropped substantially to RM 5,000 in 2018. This is a sure example that ecological corridors are beneficial to both people and wildlife. In the next five years, the Sabah Landscapes program will aim to effect change via its three pillars, protect, produce and restore, for the benefit of nature and people. It is up to us. Our forest is our responsibility. Our wildlife, our responsibility. The sustainable use of our natural resources is our responsibility. Sabah is our home and it's our responsibility. Ensuring that our development is sustainable is our responsibilities.